good morning in today's class let us study about one of the most important component of white matter of brain that is the internal capsule so this internal capsule is classified under the projection fibers so already we have studied the classification of white matter and details about the corpus callosum that is an example of commercial commercial fibers in our previous class today we'll study about one of the most important component of the projection fiber that is the internal capsule first we'll go to the location of internal capsule this is a horizontal section of brain in horizontal section of brain we can draw the horizontal section of brain so this is a midline what you're seeing here this is a cortex We'll have the insula. This is the insula. This is the occipital pole. This is the frontal pole. This is the occipital pole, and this is actually the insula. Now, if you see medially, we have this bulged portion here. This is actually the thalamus. This is actually the thalamus. Medially, we have thalamus, and supromedially or anteromedially it's not supromedial it's anteromedially we have one more nucleus rounded nucleus called the this one this is a caudate nucleus it's caudate nucleus so this is a caudate nucleus so now coming laterally we have the lentiform nucleus so this nucleus is the lentiform nucleus so this is the medially we have the thalamus and the caudate nucleus and laterally we have the lentiform nucleus so this is the lentiform nucleus you can see clearly this is actually the lentiform nucleus so everything is appearing dark this nucleus are appearing dark now between these nucleus this mass of white matter which is somewhat b shaped somewhat b shaped is called the internal capsule so this the fibers white fibers which are passing between this nucleus is called the internal capsule so by studying the specimen and this diagram we can easily tell the boundaries of internal capsule or the relations of internal capsule medially it is bounded by thalamus and caudate nucleus laterally it is bounded by lentiform nucleus and the internal capsule is v shaped so this v shaped internal capsule has got the following parts now we'll study about the parts of the internal capsule so as we know now we are going to study about the parts of internal capsule as we know it is a v shaped structure internal capsule with a concave surface facing laterally and the convex surface is facing medially this internal capsule has got an anterior limb genu posterior limb and two more parts which is the retro lentiform part and sub lentiform part this is actually the retro lentiform part retro lentiform part and we have one more part called the sub lentiform part So, if you take a three-dimensional view, and see, this area is a sub-lentiform part. The retro-lentiform part is located behind the level of the. lentiform nucleus when says this is a lentiform nucleus so this retro lentiform part is located behind the level of the lentiform nucleus and the sub lentiform part is located below the level of the lentiform nucleus next coming to the relation of the parts of the internal capsule these parts anterior limb is located between the caudate nucleus medially and the anterior part of lentiform nucleus laterally then this genu is nothing but the bend the posterior limb is located between 
the thalamus medially so this is a medial aspect the lateral aspect so thalamus medially and the lentiform nucleus laterally so this is about the relation of the parts next we have to study about the fibers which are passing through the internal capsule fibers of internal capsule so what type of fibers are present in the internal capsule so all the fibers which are present in the internal capsule are all projection fibers so we know the fibers which are present in the internal capsule all projection fibers this is the midline this is the cerebral hemisphere schematic diagram of a internal capsule so the fibers which are passing through the internal capsule are all projection fibers and the fibers which are seen superiorly above the corona radi above the uh, internal capsule is called the corona radiata so these fibers are called corona radiata and these corona radiata fibers will be passing through the internal capsule and extend downwards as crest cerebri of midbrain as crest cerebri of midbrain these fibers which are passing through the internal capsule can be classified as ascending and descending fibers as the name implies ascending means towards the cerebral cortex descending means away from the cerebral cortex so ascending and descending fiber these ascending fibers are sensory fibers these ascending fibers are the sensory fibers and these descending fibers are all the motor fibers so now we'll study about each fiber separately ascending fibers and descending fibers separately first we'll talk about the descending fi fibers descending fibers are otherwise called as motor fibers otherwise called as motor fibers so what are the different descending fibers we have in the internal capsule first is the cortico pontine fibers second we have the cortico spinal fibers third we have the extra pyramidal fib fibers these cortico spinal fibers are otherwise called as pyramidal fibers so these are the different descending fibers we have in the internal capsule now we'll study one by one first we'll study about the cortico pontine fibers to learn about the cortico pontine fibers first we'll draw the cerebral hemisphere consider as the right sided cerebral hemisphere next we can draw the internal capsule just a schematic diagram this is also the right sided internal capsule so just consider this as midline so this internal capsule is a right sided internal capsule next you can draw the pons followed by medulla now laterally and posterior to the pons and the medulla we have the cerebellum is a cerebellum this is pons is medulla this internal capsule the cerebral hemisphere as we know the central sulcus in front of the central sulcus we have the primary motor cortex area number 4 behind the central sulcus we have area number 3 1 2 which is the sensory cortex now we complete the internal capsule by drawing the sublentiform part 
and the petrol and deform part and the petrol and deform part these corticopontine fibers which are arising from the cerebral cortex are named according to the places from where it is originating from like example from the frontal lobe if it originates it is called fronto pontine fibers so first type of fibers which are present are fronto pontine fibers we are going to draw using green color this fronto pontine fibers will come from the frontal region pass through the anterior limb genu and the posterior limb so these fronto pontine fibers pass through anterior limb genu and the posterior limb and it descends down to end in the same side pontine nucleus so it will be ending in the same side pontine nucleus so there will be multiple pontine nucleus it will be ending in the same side pontine nucleus so these are all nothing but the first order neurons that is about fronto pontine fibers so important thing we have to remember is starting from the frontal lobe it is actually going through the anterior limb genu and the posterior limb of the internal capsule ending in the ipsilateral side of the pontine nucleus there is the same side pontine nucleus the next group of fiber is the parieto pontine fiber along with the parieto pontine fibers we have the third group of fiber that is the occipito pontine fibers so these parieto occipito parieto pontine fibers and the occipito pontine fibers will start from the respective region so this is the parieto pontine fiber and these are all the occipito pontine parieto pontine occipito pontine this is the fronto pontine so these two are represented with blue color now these fibers will go through the retrolentiform part of the nucleus will go through the retrolentiform part of the nucleus uh, sorry it is retrolentiform part of the internal capsule not the nucleus it is going through the retrolentiform part of the internal capsule similar similar to the other fibers it is also relaying in the these are also primary first order neurons which will be relaying in the same side pontine nucleus the last group of cortico pontine fibers are the temporo pontine fibers these temporo pontine fibers start from the temporal lobe and it will pass through the sub lentiform part and end in the pontine nucleus of the same cell so here it is the same all the fibers are ending in the same side pontine nucleus now the second these are all the first order neurons the second order neurons from the pontine nucleus most of the fibers will be crossing to the opposite side and ending in opposite side cerebellum so the pathway which is formed is the cortico ponto cerebellar pathway so the pathway this cortico pontine fibers will form the cortico ponto cerebellar pathway which will be passing through the different regions of the internal capsule this is about the first group of motor fibers is the cortico pontine fibers so the main function of this cortico pontine fibers is coordination of movements so all the movements of the body is mainly coordinated with the help of this cortico ponto cerebellar pathway which is formed by these fibers the next important motor fibers are the pyramidal fibers these pyramidal fibers can be of two types one is the cortico nuclear fibers and cortico spinal fibers as the name implies these cortico nuclear fibers are responsible for the motor activities of the cranial nerve nucleus which has involved which are involving the cranial cranial nerve nucleus the cortico spinal tract will be ending in the spinal cord that is the anterior horn of the spinal cord to innervate the 
muscles, skeletal muscles in the upper limb, lower limb, thorax, etc. To understand the pyramidal tract, we'll draw a schematic diagram. Here, the first we'll draw the cerebral cortex. The cerebral cortex. Consider again the cerebral cortex of right side. So, since it is right side, we'll draw the internal capsule of right side. It's the internal capsule of the right side. So this is a three-dimensional view. Next, we'll draw the right side of the pons followed by medulla. Then, at last, we have to draw spinal cord. Consider this as the midline. So this side is the right side, right sided pons, right side medulla, right side of the spinal cord, this is all left side. Now, here we have the central sulcus, lateral sulcus. So in, in behind the central sulcus, we have the post central gyrus which is having 312 which is the sensory cortex we are not going to study about the sensory cortex now we will we have our main concern is about the motor cortex which is in front of the central sulcus that is here represented by area number 4 here this motor area from above downwards or from the medial aspect towards the lateral aspect it is represented by the lower limb the thorax and the abdomen that is a trunk then the upper limb head and neck face tongue so this is how the body is represented in the area number four motor cortex of area number four now the fibers which are emerging from this cortex is mainly of two types one is the corticonuclear and other one is corticospinal. First we will study about the corticonuclear fibers. These corticonuclear fibers we will represent with the green color. The fibers which are coming from the head and neck, face and the tongue will form the corticonuclear fibers because the muscles which are present there are all innervated by the cranial nerve nucleus. These fibers mainly pass through the genu of the corpus callosum. So this is the genu of the corpus callosum. Pass through the genu of the corpus callosum. And then it cross to the opposite side. Pass through the genu of the corpus callosum. Cross to the opposite side to end in the cranial nerve nucleus. On the present in the opposite side. So it ends in the cranial nerve nucleus of the opposite side. So it's the opposite side cranial nerve nucleus. Okay, so this is about corticonuclear fibers. So mainly it is carrying out the motor function of the muscles innervated by the cranial nerve. Okay, next we will study about the corticospinal fibers. Next we will study about the corticospinal fibers. The corticospinal fibers pass through the posterior limb of the internal capsule. This is the posterior limb. Pass through the posterior limb of the internal capsule in this order. First, the upper limb fibers will be the cranial most fibers. Upper limb fibers will be the cranial most fibers. Next comes the fibers which are coming from the trunk then more caudally we have the fibers which are coming from the lower limb so these fibers together it will form the cortico 
spinal fibers which will form the pyramidal tract which will form the pyramidal tract next we will see what will happen to these fibers from here all these fibers pass through the same side of pons same side pons and then cross at the level of the medulla the fibers will cross at the medulla at the level of the medulla to form the decussation the pyramidal decussation from here it will descend down into the spinal cord to end in the anterior horn cells to end in the anterior horn cells so this is the fate of cortico spinal tract so all the cortico spinal tracts fibers are all passing through the retro lentiform part cortico nuclear fibers are passing through the genu which will be ending in the opposite side cranial nucleus cortico spinal tract end in the opposite side anterior horn cells of the spinal cord third type of motor fiber what we are going to study is the extra pyramidal fibers these extra pyramidal fibers are responsible for maintaining tone posture and equilibrium and few other functions these extra pyramidal fibers will be connecting the cerebral cortex to that of the subcortical gray matter like example the red nucleus the corpus striatum the substantia nigra etc during its course it will pass through the internal capsule and it will be passing and it will be taking the similar position as that of the cortico spinal fibers so these are all about the motor fibers of the motor fibers which are passing through the internal capsule we will study about the sensory fibers blood supply and its applied importance in our next video